Do you own a heat pump? Do you have solar? If so, this video might be for you. So smash a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So we're here at the house of one of our regular customers. We've installed an EV charger here. They've got a huge solar array in the garden and they've got a three phase heat pump as well as a load of battery storage that we installed recently. Now, the three phase heat pump is great, but it uses a huge amount of energy. And currently, despite all the devices that our customer has, he's still exporting a huge amount of power during the day in summer. And we wanna do our best to help the customer harness that solar energy and use it himself as much as possible. So today, we're gonna to integrate something to the heat pump, which is gonna enable him to activate the heat pump when there's excess solar heat the hot water and basically fill these hot water tanks and use them as like a heat battery to store that energy and use it to run the house overnight. Now traditionally we might install a solar energy diverter to heat the hot water via an immersion heater like this. That's good because it does use the excess solar to heat the water but an immersion heater is not very efficient compared to a heat pump. Let me tell you about how heat pumps work. So this particular heat pump is a ground source heat pump and how it works in very simple terms is that there's a big loop of pipes buried in the ground called a ground loop. Those pipes are filled with a mixture of water and antifreeze. They absorb heat from the ground. Then the heat gets taken into the heat pump and via a compressor, that heat is increased and used to heat the hot water and the central heating pipes in the house. If you've got an air source heat pump, it works via the same principle, except it extracts the heat from the air. Now, a well-installed heat pump will work to a coefficient of performance or COP of three to five. That means for one unit of energy electricity that you put in, you get three to five units of heat out, whereas an immersion heater only works on a one-to-one -one efficiency. So if you put one kilowatt of power into it, you will get one kilowatt of heat out. So today we've got Andy from My Energy coming to show us how to connect this to the heat pump so that we can run the heat pump off pure solar energy. So this is Andy from My Energy. He's going to tell us a bit about himself. So what's your role at My Energy? So, uh, so at My Energy, I'm senior product manager. I take care of all things heat. So I joined. Uh, my my background is I was a heating engineer way way back. Uh, it's been a long time since then though. <laughs> Uh, and then I, yeah, I moved into Valent. I used to do uh, system design. I used to do like heat pump uh, schematics and layouts and all the all of the, the, all of this wonderful goodness. Yeah. Uh, sort of took an affinity to, to controls and how to control things, and uh, moved into product management for for controls. And I've been in product management for ten years, eleven years, twelve years, maybe. But my yeah, my passion is is definitely heat. Um, so I'm in the right I'm in the right place. And uh, now I get to work on the wonderful Eddie and uh, maybe some new exciting Eddies coming, coming along, the, along the way. Oh, there's a teaser for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm really glad that you've come today because I don't know barely anything about heat pumps. <laughs> and you've been already a massive help figuring out, can we actually do it with this one? Seems like we can. Yeah. So let me talk me through the install. Yeah. yeah so How does it all work and what are we going to do? So what we've got here is a knee bead ground source heat pump. The Essentially the, the, the ground, once you go a meter down, if you size the pipe work correctly, is pretty much always 10 degrees. So you know you've always got 10 degrees. So you get a really consistent efficiency from ground source. So here we've got the buffer. So the buffer is used to essentially that ground source heat pump will come on. Uh, it will come on and it will heat this buffer and it will maintain a temperature in this buffer. What does that mean? So we're sort of used to the world of boilers where it's a bit like having a Ferrari to go to the corner shop. It's, you, you kind of just really shoot in down the road and you're wasting a lot of energy doing that. So having a buffer, it means that the heat pump can trickle charge that. It doesn't have to come on at full rate. It can really just slowly and gradually improve its, uh, its compressor speed and and the way and you know warm its oils up and ultimately you just get much better efficiency if you've got a buffer so uh yeah good to see a buffer this dual hot water tank here this is taking care of the hot water for the customer so what you can see is the heat pump pipe work coming in here and then you've got your hot pipe work coming out at the top there yeah it's a really really tidy install it's lovely so a little tip that i always like to do take a picture of everything before you make any changes just in case you do kind of mess things up at least you can put it back how it was before <laughs> That oh, one. you know what it is? Yeah. Maybe it's live and neutral, which then activates the relay. If I put it on now, yeah, it yeah. activates the relay. 
and then that's off and then auto will be the, the, the heat pump will activate yeah. the relay yeah and, uh, yeah so we can use that relay as a switch into eddy and then what it will do is it will tell eddy that there's an external demand so um i need to i need to boost the immersion heater something is telling me boost 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 i think let's let's just decouple it let's put it into eddy eddy will react um, in the exact same way as if that was wired straight into the immersion heater, it will just know I need to come on and power the immersion heater. Um, cool. I think it's probably the better way. So some of you might be wondering why we're using an eddy and not maybe some other kind of solar diverter. We've got the full My Energy ecosystem at this property. We've got the Zappi, the Libby batteries. And so it just makes sense to fit the eddy. The ecosystem that My Energy has just talks to each other seamlessly and in my experience, Eddy is the best quality solar energy diverter out there. I've worked with some others. They just don't, they're not as solidly built as this. And this, as far as I know, is the only one that has that heat pump integration capability as well. So that's why we're fitting an Eddy today. So for this job, you're gonna need a My Energy Eddy, which comes with instructions, CT and aerials. You're gonna need the additional relay board, very important, a PT1000 temperature sensor, some heat resistant flex, and some tools to fix it all to the wall and connect it up. So the heat pump here is a Nibi F1355, but you might be wondering, well, how do I know if my heat pump is compatible with this kind of setup? Well, the simple way is to find out if your heat pump is SG ready. Now, the chances are that if your heat pump was built or installed after September 2016, it will be because there was a regulatory change made then that meant that this kind of integration needs to be a part of the new heat pumps. But if you're in any doubt, there is a list of compatible boilers on the My Energy website, so I'll leave a link below where you can have a look at that. So I'm going to start mounting the eddy on the wall. Now we're going to do a hardwired connection between the eddy and the heat pump because we can, it's so close. However, interestingly, Andy said to me that there is an option with the Nibi heat pump to actually do it via an API so that you don't even need a hardwired connection between the two. So that's quite an interesting possibility that actually some people who've got an eddy already and got a heat pump already could activate this kind of functionality via an API without anyone even coming to site. So in the packaging, we've got two aerials and then four screws and a couple of cable ties. The aerials are two things, one for Wi-Fi and one for the My Energy wireless signal that communicates between devices. So you do need both of them. I can see it from the picture that the left-hand side is the funny like stubby one and then the right-hand side is the rounded one. So that's easy. I haven't mentioned this in a while, but this is my favorite hammer ever. It's so good for taking clips off. You just, it's just brilliant. And I have a secret YouTube channel about tools because I actually love tools called Tools for Sparks. I'll leave a link where you can watch the video review of this amazing hammer among all my other lovely tools. Now the eddy cools by convection. There's this massive heat sink on the back. So you do need enough of a gap above and below to allow airflow through it. Never put it too close to something below or above because then it could cause it to overheat. Shout out to Ruben, I borrowed his little pack out for his fixings. He's managed to fit this into his Vito tool bag that he's got. So he's got a little pack out that slides out and it's got all his fixings, Vargos and all that stuff. It's pretty clever. So the actual connecting of the power in and out of the Eddy is super simple. We've done many videos about that, so I'm not gonna bore, bore you with it. There is a link in the description somewhere or at the end of this video where you can watch how to install an Eddy in a normal solar setup with no heat pump. So just ferreled those wires up. Just gonna get the power in and out of the eddy sorted to the immersion heater. That bit done. And then it's the fancy control wiring that we need to tackle and all the settings and the heat pump. 
So for safety, we just need to safely isolate everything. So we've turned the heat pump off and we've turned the immersion heater circuit off so that everything here is safe to work on. So we're taking power from this immersion heater circuit, which is fed from the consumer unit by a dedicated circuit. It's a 2.5 millimeter uh, twin and earth cable. This is currently then controlled by the heat pump via this relay. And there's this automatic um, override switch as well. So you can override it to turn the immersion heater on directly. You can turn it off or you can have it on auto so that the heat pump tells the immersion heater to start heating up. We're gonna actually basically remove this and connect this control cable from the heat pump directly into the eddy so that the eddy is told by the heat pump when to turn the immersion heater on or not. So what I've done here is I've taken the power coming straight out of the immersion heater switch and just connected it directly to the flex now that is going to the eddy. So that just goes through there. This relay here is now no longer needed because the cable that is going to the heat pump, which is this flex here, that was activating this relay, now is going straight into the eddy and it's gonna activate the relay board in the eddy to turn the immersion heater on instead. So that's going in there. We need to fit the relay board in here and then we need to run our S485 comms cable over to the boiler, uh, over to the heat pump as well. So this is the relay board which we need to fit to the eddy and there are a few things that we need to know about. You've got these feet here. These feet need to go into the, the back of the relay board to help it securely mount on the eddy. So in, instructions show that the blank one goes here and then the others go in the other three. Then the ribbon cable goes in here. So these two little connectors go in here and there to connect your PT1000 temperature sensors into. You can have two temperature probes, one for the top of the tank and one for the bottom of the tank. So we connect the ribbon cable in to the board here and then this slides under the main board and then we can line the feet up and it should just click into place like that, boom. So this temperature sensor is going to go in this little pocket here in the tank um, that goes in a decent way and it just measures the temperature within the tank. Now we're going to need to just wedge it in so that it stays to the side and detects the correct temperature. I'm just gonna use a little bit of heat resistant foam to do that. So then we'll neatly cable tie this along with the flex for the immersion heater and connect it into our eddy. So I'm connecting the heating cable that goes to the immersion heater now into the outgoing terminals of the eddy. That's in H1, M and F terminals basically. It's a little bit tight now with the relay board in place, but uh, you've just got to loosen the terminals. That's what I've learned because they're actually pre-tightened when they come out of the factory. So with our eSense terminals, we're going to use the brown for the bottom terminal, that's what it says in the instructions, and then the blue as the top one. And then the RS485 cable or data cable that we're using is going to go in relay one, and that's going to go between normally closed and normally open, or sorry, common and normally open. Right, so in here we've got the communications cable that's going to the heat pump here. Common and normally open. So we've just used one pair of a Cat5 just to do that. Then this is the existing eSense connection that was going to that Neeb controller before. Uh, that's now connected into our relay board here. And then our outgoing heating cable is connected into these terminals under here, H1, neutral and earth. So that's the one that goes out. Um, and goes to our immersion heater there. And then our PT1000 sensor comes along and goes in to our PT1 terminal there. And this is our incoming power as well, just FYI. These cable clamps need to be clamped down just to hold everything in place. That's a bit tight in there, but I have managed to get four cables in there. So that's quite impressive really. And then we just need to connect the uh, data cable at the other end at the heat pump. So we're just going to wire the data cable in now at this end um, and that is going to go to our auxiliary 5 terminals here. That's according to the 
instruction manual 21 and 22. Okay, so there's no indication in the manual of which one should be common and which one should be normally open. So we're just gonna go with 21 for common, the 22 for normally open. Okay, so moment of truth. This is the bit that I love. Peeling the sticker off the screen. Oh yeah, satisfying. So Eddie is powered on and we've just got to set it all up. So it's an additional device. So we'll select that because we've already got my energy devices here in place. Confirm the settings, press the tick button, else press X button. So we don't want uh, the Eddie to be the master because the Zappi is already the master. So we'll just click through those. And then what we need to do is go in and basically pair it up to our um, other devices. So if we go to uh, linked devices and then pairing mode, and we're gonna activate pairing mode on our Zappi and then connect them together. And there we've got our Eddy, boom. So now the question mark, it will count down and then the question mark will disappear if it's properly connected. So we are pairing the devices together. Now we've put the Eddy into pairing mode. Zappi is being put into pairing mode by Andy and I think now it's paired up. Yes, there we go. We have Zappi, Eddy, Libby, Libby, Libby and VHub. So that's the first step and all our firmware is up to date. Now we need to go in and set the settings for the Eddy to control the immersion heater and the heat pump. Talk me through it, Andy. Okay, so uh, essentially if you go down to relay and sensors um, and into relay and sensors, what we need to do is set the temperature. So for the temperature, we want to set that set limit there for the top to 63. Yep. And we will change the hysteresis to, uh, so go down to hysteresis, change that to two. Okay, so that's basically, hysteresis is the... The up and lower level for the How much TV. you could go above the set limit, basically, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So maximum and below, temperature actually. is going to be 65 degrees yeah, and it or won't, down to 61. Yeah, and it won't come on again until 61, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, so it's lower than 61. So, so if you, and that's our current reading, is it 49? 49. 49, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you come back out of there, so relay one is where we need to set the uh, communication to the heat pump. So if we set that to export, yeah. uh, we want to set an on threshold. So that's when we have a certain amount of surplus that needs to activate the heat pump. Mm -hmm. So if we set that to five um, kilowatts, because this guy's got a three phase heat pump and a big solar array. Okay, so that essentially means that the heat pump needs five kilowatts to run mm -hmm. as minimum, is that right? Correct, yeah. And so only when the system is exporting more than five kilowatts to the grid will it start to kick in the heat pump. Yeah. And then the off threshold, what's that all about? So that's basically, if it comes on at five, it can you can then set an off threshold. So if you for some reason didn't want it to come on again until, f if you wanted the heat pump to stay on until the export dropped below three, mm. um, it would then switch back to, 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 to three. So what um, do you recommend just on stick this? it to five as well. So we've got it, uh, or just below five, um, as we don't really want to be consuming any energy from the grid. We want to make sure that we're we're covering uh, everything on this. So what, four and a half or? Yeah, that, that's fine, yeah. So yeah. 500 watts between it. Uh, so it's, the next point is include diverted. So if, if that's set to no, Eddie will ignore the, the, the current that it's currently putting into the immersion heater. Mm -hmm. We obviously want it to take into account not just what we're exporting, but how much we're putting into the tank. So we want to change that to, to yes. And that will just mean that basically it will um, uh, it will take into account the load that it's putting into the tank as well as the export. So if it's putting three kilowatts into here and we've got two kilowatts exporting, it knows there's a total of five kilowatts. So it okay. needs to bring the heat pump on. Um, and then you've got the on, uh, on, and, on and off time. So this is largely for cloud cover more than anything else. Now mm -hmm. the heat pump's got its own timer anyway. So uh, for now, I think we can leave that at, at one minute. Okay. Um, so if you come back out, um, the next thing that we need to do is set the eSense input. So if you go into there, yeah. So this is where we've connected the signal from the heat pump to Eddy, uh, and we've done that so that it can activate the Eddy in for Legionella protection or for whatever region, reason it needs to activate the immersion heater. Okay. So we just want to stick that to boost um, and boost one. 
Yeah. And what that will do is, if you just come back out now, it should be highlighted with a little square, yeah. yeah. So now, Eddie knows that whenever there's a signal from the heat pump, it needs to go 100% power to the immersion heater until it's told, otherwise all the immersion heater hits temperature. Um, cool. We need to turn the CTs off because I always forget to do that yeah, and then we get problems. <laughs> so I'll turn CT1 to none, yeah. CT2 to none. Yeah. Perfect. So now what do we need to do? Set it up on the heat, heat pump. pump side. Yeah. So just to show, we are currently generating 2.2 kilowatts and the house is pulling uh, 0.9. It is heating the immersion heater at 2.3 kilowatts at the moment. Um, so that's why it was exporting a minute ago. Now it's stopped heating the immersion heater element because the export has finished. So uh, probably we'll find that, yeah, we've gone back to exporting 0.9 now. So it's just getting that balance. And when a certain amount of power is exported, it will ramp up the immersion heater to heat the hot water with any excess solar. So at the heat pump side, we basically need to tell the heat pump what to do when that normally open contact is closed via this little auxiliary input that we've connected. So in the menu, we're gonna try and find the right settings. Now, just to be aware, obviously there's so many different types of heat pumps out there with so many different settings. It's probably best to consult the manufacturer's instructions to find the exact setting for your particular heat pump. Uh, or if you're not sure, contact the manufacturer's technical helpline. But we're gonna just get it set up for this one and hopefully it should be similar-ish between the different ones. So as I know barely anything about heat pumps, Andy's gonna steer the controls on this particular heat pump and show us how to set it all up. So we've, we've set the temperature on the eddy to 63 degrees, maximum 65. Yeah. Um, and basically what we're doing is we're now setting the, the, or we have set the heat pump temperature. We set the heat pump temperature to 55, um, but it's typically gonna stop at about 50 as there's a couple of settings in the NIBI. Um, but essentially you can see at the moment it's sitting at 52 degrees. Uh, and all that's doing is it's meaning that we've got a little bit of a buffer. So we know that we've got enough hot water from the heat pump uh, from the grid overnight to make sure that there's enough for showers in the morning and, and baths. That will deplete the temperature a little bit and then Eddie can kick in and take that up to 65. So it, we've always got a buffer there and Eddie's gonna fill, fill it up with all that wonderful solar uh, energy. The way that we've done that is we've connected to the auxiliary uh, connection here, which is auxiliary five. Um, and then we've set that in the service menu. Essentially, once you've got into the service menu, you go into operating settings, hot water settings, and then you can see here that we've got our uh, temperature settings for, for normal, which is 45, uh, 44 degrees start, 50 degrees stop. And then for our solar, we've got um, start at 50 and stop at 65. So this, we've matched the temperature settings to Eddie. So when Eddie decides that it no longer needs to heat the tank anymore and it wants to switch the heat pump on, it will switch the heat pump on via auxiliary five and then the heat pump will run to 65 as well. So they're both, they're both matching in terms of what temperature they can take that to. We've set it at 65 and not higher than 65 as at the moment this, uh, there is blending um, outlets in the, in the home, um, but we don't want to get set the tank too hot just in case uh, the customer gets, you know, the customer might not like it. So now what we've got here with the Eddy connected is basically like a giant heat battery. This is a 400 litre tank of water, which will take about 25 kilowatt hours of energy to fully heat up. The three kilowatt immersion heater at the bottom would need to be running for about eight hours to fully heat this tank of water. But we can heat it with excess energy from the customer's solar array, meaning they don't need to em import any power to heat this hot water. And the hot water's stored there like another additional battery storage, but a heat battery. What an amazing system. So everything's showing up in our My Energy app now all of the devices there and they talk to each other. And how we set up this particular heat pump system is that first of all, the eddy will start to heat the immersion heater element. It can start trickle heating that immersion heater at just 150 watts. So even with 150 watts of export, it'll start to heat the hot water right the way up to the full three kilowatts that the immersion heater element can run at. Then if there's more than five kilowatts of export happening, 
power being sent out to the grid from solar, the heat pump will kick in and that will continue to run and use up that extra solar energy until it drops below 4.5 kilowatts of, of export and then it will slowly shut down. So the idea is basically to just grab and use as much of that excess solar as possible to use it in the house rather than sending it out to the grid and being paid a pittance for it. Then the Zappi and the Libby's will also be part of this system. So if the customer's got the car plugged in, it will start to charge the car off any excess solar. And once the car's fully charged and the Eddy is saying that the tank is fully up to temperature, then the Libby batteries will start to charge up with any more excess that they have. And then those Libby batteries will be used to run the house overnight. So the customer is basically completely off grid in this situation. It's an amazing setup and all of the devices are so easy to manage and watch in the My Energy app. So we can see now in the settings on the Eddy, really nice, we can actually see if we go to tank one, the current temperature of the tank, because we've installed that PT1000 temperature sensor, we can live monitor what temperature the tank is, as well as all the other data about how much power is being used. Uh, we can set it up, boost it, etc. It's really, really good. Now this Nibi heat pump is internet connected and they are working on some stuff in the background to get the SG ready settings all tweaked and perfect for us. So at the moment, we've not activated the SG ready on here, but the advantage of having an internet connected heat pump is that the settings can be tweaked and altered remotely without having to do a revisit to site. So that's what we're gonna do in this case, and Nibi are on the case, trying to help us and support us with this install. Well, that's it, the final piece of the puzzle here for our customer. Every My Energy device that exists is here now. Super exciting. Thanks so much, Andy, for coming. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. It was really uh, good to have somebody with all that knowledge about heat pumps to talk me through it. If you'd like to find out more about the Eddy and integration with heat pumps, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you do have a heat pump and you want us to connect an Eddy to it, well, get in touch. If we're in your area, we'd be happy to help. Otherwise, you can find an installer through the My Energy website. If you've enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy these two videos up on screen too. So why not settle in, grab a cup of tea and watch a few more. But either way, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.